Over the past week, we've seen lots of in intense things and emotions and changes in our community, especially on TV and sometimes on the radio. And um, everyone I have spoken to is, is reacting, of course, to the horrible actions taken um, by the Minneapolis police against George Floyd, who died with lethal, with, after lethal force was used to subdue him, even though he, had, he was handcuffed and not resisting. I had many phone calls over the course of the last 10 days, uh, and everyone I spoke to said the first thing they would say is they were horrified by the incident. Over the past couple of weeks, the very soul of our society, that of our neighbors, our friends, and our families has been challenged. We have witnessed unspeakable actions resulting in tragedy. We have seen unrest within our communities, our own communities, brought about by the raw emotion that rightfully stems from the failure to hear, to comprehend, and to advocate for the equity of black people. And we have seen a deep and distinguishable thirst for understanding and action. You know, in today's world, it is simply too easy to see this divide. It is unconscionably too convenient to display ignorance to the struggles of our black citizens, and it is painfully too commonplace to denounce the thoughts and feelings of others simply because they do not mesh with those of our own. These issues that continue to divide us are not partisan issues. They do not stop at the doorstep of our homes based upon affiliation or classification. These are the issues of decency. These are the issues of civility. These are the issues of equity. These are the issues of each of us. And they are meant to serve as the issues that unite rather than those that divide. While there have been moments within our history that leave behind the visible scars of imperfection and hate, we are somehow still reliving these moments in the present day, and we simply cannot, must not, turn a blind eye and deaf ear yet again. For these moments of time offer us the opportunity to turn hate into hope, anger into awareness, and pain into progress. We have traveled down paths such as this far too many times, and if we fail to change our hearts and minds, each and every one of us, we are doomed to repeat this vicious cycle of fear anger, uncertainty, and pain. Over these past couple weeks, I've engaged in deep and meaningful conversations on these critical topics during these critical times, and each of these conversations has allowed me to speak, they've allowed me to listen, to hear, to understand, and to reflect. Tonight marks our first public meeting since late May, and over the past few weeks, I have read and seen many statements. And while I'm happy to share some of my feelings here today, Please don't mistake words on any piece of paper for a cure. Words will not fix this issue at hand. Only actions, honest conversation, true listening and hearing, and a complete and total commitment to understanding will get us on that path. Yes, words matter, yet they are simply the beginning. It will take way more than words for us to affect the real and sustainable change that is necessary. To those of you that have or are engaging in violence and or destruction, you are diluting the message that needs to be heard. To those of you seeking to harm or intimidate those engaging in peaceful demonstrations, as we saw on Sunday, you will be held accountable and you are the problem. I, like so many of those with whom I have spoken with, reject acts of hate, of prejudice, and of the willful disregard for the rights of black people. Together, as a society and as a nation, I join those that unapologetically attest that black lives matter. We will emerge from these dark and solemn days, yet we will need to do so together. There is a time for talk and a time for listening. There is a time for action and a time for reflection. There is a time for understanding and a time for healing. Today, it is painfully evident that that time for each of those things is right now. Only with listening and true compassion will we close the divide of prejudice. These same gaps that divide us can be sealed with our collective efforts to cast aside our judgment of others and reach deep 
within ourselves and find a commitment to be better first individually and then collectively. This deep well of despair, anguish, sorrow, and pain has run dry. And together, it is time to change our hearts and our minds to bring about all new levels of understanding, compassion, and healing. And personally, I stand ready and prepared to stand here with each of you, my colleagues, and this entire county in this endeavor today, tomorrow, and every day. Mr. Chairman, thank you. Black people have been afraid for decades and it breaks my heart every time I hear people talk more about their property than they do the loss of human life. Ever since black people were brought here on slave ships, we have been um, a lesser class. And there's a few who get the opportunity to um, be in, in, in positions where they don't have to worry about anything. But people that look like me, look like Mr. Thornton, even now in 2020, um, have to wrestle with having a darker skin color. I'm thankful that the mall wasn't destroyed. And we talk about riots and, and looters like they are um, a subset of life. You know, we've heard this so many times that, that riots are the voice of the unheard. You know, we keep referring to the rioting, the rioting and the looting like the past week, the past eight or nine days, um, there have been protests that have been peaceful all across this region. I want our Henrico Police Department to know that we appreciate them. You know, I, I sent the chief a message before we started our meeting. Um, I told him on, on Sunday that I appreciated him walking with us. You know, most of our Henrico County Police um, officers have been doing a good job, great job representing their communities. But there is a um, mistrust that you cannot explain away across the country. And it's hard when black people can look at a TV screen and see another black person murdered and it's right there. I don't know how many incidents have happened since. Every day I see some new video with a black person being beaten up. There was just somebody I saw last night on MSNBC, CNN, Fox News, all showing the same video of somebody a year and a half ago in Texas saying, I can't breathe, as they were not fighting back after being arrested. And so please understand, those who serve in the police department in Henrico, that this is not a personal attack against you. Um, it's hard continuously seeing people be murdered. And so there are decades of defeat. The focus sometimes is on the wrong thing. No need to be afraid. If you really care, get out there and protest. Push for some stuff to make this a better place so that the last black person I ever see murdered by police was George Floyd. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Every board member here has strong feelings. And I'd like to, my, my opinion and my position in this county, I believe we've always demanded excellence in everything, from public works, public utilities, as well as our police. I know I, as I believe this board, is committed to having equal justice and a safe Henrico for all residents. And we've been committed to these principles. I've also personally, and I believe as a board, demanded that Henrico have the best trained and most professional police department, as well as all of our departments. Uh, I will continue to strive that every, every part of uh, Henrico maintain and continue looking for the best of training so we can guarantee that 
in Henrico or, or, and hope that no locality in America, can, in America can have a member of the police department murder anybody, black or white, Hispanic or Asian. So I would strive for, to our manager and to our citizens and to our department heads to keep pushing for excellence. As for the protesters that have, have walked in, in short pump twice, uh, thank you for bringing awareness and for our police. Thank you for ensuring, because my biggest concern from the get was anyone that walks down Broad Street, that is, that is one scary, dangerous place to walk. And thank you for the Henrico County Police to ensure everyone's safety. That's my, that's my comments, Mr. Thornton. What I have gleaned from all of this is let us to make sure that we are cognizant and appreciative of what's called the winds of change. Because when you really look at protests, that's how America got here. Uh, but this protest seemed to be a little different, and I'm sure that we're going to have the wherewithal to make sure that we make the best of it we don't want to be arrogant, and um, we also want to be careful, because I'm I'm thinking it's a new movement, but I'm gonna I'm gonna withhold judgment. But I think one of the things that I believe in is called possibility government, and that means that this is a government uh, which listens to the people, listens to the times, and also try to make the right decisions for humaneness, for humanness, for humanity. That's very important. And um, I just know that my colleagues on this August board, uh, along with me, will be striving to make things better. And I end with this, uh, Mr. Chairman. Let us always be careful of being too silent. You can have what's called the appalling silence of the good people. And we want to make sure that uh, we correct that. And when we see something wrong, we should say, that's not right. So let us make sure that we strive and make this world, make this county, make this state, make this country better than it was last year. Thank you, Mr. Chairman.